At this time, I would like to call the meeting to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Next, we have B1, audience with individuals. Ms. Densmore. This is the time for the public to comment. Members of the board may not discuss items that are not specifically identified on this agenda. Pursuant to ARS 38431.01, action taken as a result of public comment will be limited to directing staff to study the matter responding to any criticism or scheduling the matter for further consideration and decision at a later date in order to facilitate accomplishing the business of the district in a timely manner. A time limit of three minutes will be imposed for each individual or group addressing the board. When you approach the podium, please state your name for the record. And first we have um, Janet LeBlanc. Good evening. My name is Janet LeBlanc. A few months ago, the board voted to purchase Savas curriculum for a one-year period with the intent of researching and pursuing other publishers. As part of that research, I would like to recommend that the board take a serious look into this curriculum that is put out by Hillsdale College. As you will see by their brochure, this curriculum is offered free of charge. Yes, you heard that right, it's free. Hillsdale College was founded in 1844 with a mission to provide all who wish to learn the education necessary to preserve civil and religious liberty in America. They understood, like the founders of our great nation, that free government requires independent, virtuous, and knowledgeable citizens. Who would not want that for their children? What school would not want sound learning for their students. Well, here it is, and it's free of charge. And please don't claim that this curriculum is too focused on religious views. Unlike Savas, that has CRT and SEL embedded within their curriculum, these courses are a true pick and choose option. There is no embedding. Their curriculum offers courses on politics, history, literature, philosophy and religion, economics, and mathematics and natural sciences. All are a la carte choices. And again, it's free. Please take a further look into this curriculum as a possible contender for adoption. As a free resource, this would not only free up thousands upon thousands of budget dollars, it would also allow Dysart to start eliminating the strings that are attached to federal grants. Federal grants hold Dysart hostage to certain stipulations that don't always live up to Dysart values. Just like the agreement you are about to enter into in consent agenda item number one. This is the time board to make changes for the betterment of Dysart, its students, and the community as a whole. Thank you for all you do. Thank you. Our next speaker is Mr. Larry LeBlanc. Excuse me. Good evening. My name is Larry LeBlanc. The dedicated folks behind me are not the ones that need talking to. It is we, the people, that need to listen. To the dedicated moms and dads and qualified educators and American patriots who sincerely care about the future of our children and are willing to screen all that is being taught to your very child, it's time to come forward. In just 20 hours of research of only a few grades, Janet and I revealed CRT and negative SCL in numerous curriculum books from grades four to six. Imagine what you well-educated folks will reveal if you take part to ensure sound learning occurs all the time for all of our students. The tyrannical behavior you are seeing today in the media 
is just a self-imploding smoke screen to keep your eyes off the real fire. The fire is in the curriculum. Be part of the solution by stepping forward with your support, your ability to discover wrong, and your patriotic duty to keep this great country on course. Imagine what your great talents will reveal. Your support towards your school board and staff is strongly encouraged. Don't be afraid. Fear is not from God. The United States of America is a great republic, and we the people are darn sure going to keep it. God bless America. <laughs> Thank you. That was it. Sorry. Thank you. Next, we will move to item C1, Superintendent Update, Dr. Dean. Thank you, Madam President, members of the Governing Board, Cabinet, and our community. <clears throat> We're very excited to announce some things that have happened this summer um, and to provide information to our community about a great kickoff uh, to the summer, which will lead to a fantastic start of next school year. I'm excited to uh, let the board know that summer workshop was a success. And uh, all the planning that had gone into summer workshop from, I guess, about October on uh, really came to fruition during the summer workshop week. I know that uh, several of our board members had opportunities to, um, to go through some of our summer workshop sessions and our teachers did a tremendous job, uh, not only in working together um, to refine our curricular standards and to uh, maximize what we do each school day, but our teacher leaders did a great job in teaching that as well. And so whether it was a second grade uh, math group or a high school PE group or a high school econ group, middle school social studies group, it was great to watch our teachers work together. Additionally, last week, our um, school administrators, our principals, some of our directors, and uh, four members of cabinet um, attended the PLC Institute in Vegas and sessions led afterwards by Dr. Croto um, and just a tremendous way for us to uh, rededicate back to the essence of what PLCs um, are supposed to look like and to really drive that forward for next school year. And so I'm very excited about the work that's done and very excited about the team um, as they move forward and look ahead. I would like to let the board know that summer school is winding down um, for our students and uh, that will be over before we knew it, know it. Additionally, um, next week at West Point Elementary School, um, we will have active shooter training um, with law enforcement that will be led by our Navy SEALs, um, not our Navy SEALs, but the, um, our um, finest military Navy SEALs. They will be uh, conducting active shooter training um, one day at West Point. Information will be provided to West Point Elementary School. Uh, Mr. Musi will actually be talking to the businesses that are right next to West Point Elementary School because it will be very active training. Um, and so we want make people to understand this is a training, it's scheduled and it's not live happening. So we're very excited about that. It's a great opportunity for our school district. And after 18 years of coming to and participating in board meetings in this outstanding school district, that is my final superintendent update. Thank you, Dr. Dean. Do we have an update from the incoming superintendent? Yes, we do. Dr. Croto. Oh, Dr. Dean, we'd like to invite you up here. Represent. <laughs> <laughs> didn't think you were getting away. How many that times do we?
I have a new superintendent update. I'd like to <laughs> thank you all so very much, and I hope it didn't get in my hair. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no, sincerely, thank you. It's been my honor to um, serve this district for um, the last 18 years, and it's been my pleasure to work with each and every one of you very closely this year. And um, I look forward to your continued successes. There are going to be many. Um, Dr. Croto will do an exceptional job, and um, I look forward to being your biggest cheerleader at, out in the community. So thank you all very much. <laughs> Sucker. I mean, thank you. <laughs> we will move on to C2, Governing Board Update. Um, I'll start this time. Dr. Dean. Sorry, Joe. I know. I'm breaking <laughs> it up. Let me start. Um, on behalf of the board, in addition to your beautiful confetti that we just gave you, we all chipped in and got you another gift. Oh, thank you. You love my wrapping? <laughs> Very nice. It's beautiful. Yes, it is very nice. I've got a six-month-old baby at home, <laughs> Sally. Well, five-month almost. It's perfect. Thank <laughs> you very, very much. Oh, goodness. Um, I'll go ahead and finish, and then we can all go on. I did not make the PLC conference. Sad face, but it looks like, sounds like everybody else did and got a lot out of it. It was great. I'm so glad that we got, that we had people going. It's awesome. Um, I was able to attend summer workshop just to tour it and see what was going on. And it was awesome. It was incredible. I mean, just to see our teachers who chose to be there, who chose to be engaged. And I think when I went, it was on Thursday, so it was later in the week. So normally, you know, later in the week, people are like tired and they're kind of, you know, off task, whatever. But no, everybody was on task. Everybody was engaged. Every, all the teachers that we saw were actively participating in everything. So it was absolutely wonderful to see that. So... And good luck. Um, well, so this being our last meeting with Dr. Dean, I just wanted to thank him for the hard work and dedication he, he's put into our district over the years and say once again how much I have enjoyed working with him and the various roles he has held during his time in Dysart. I wish him outstanding success <laughs> in his future endeavors as he embarks on his easy peasy dream job with AIA <laughs> You're going to be awesome, <laughs> and you're going to be missed. So thank you so much, and we will definitely miss you and look forward to your cheerleading debut. You um, also had the opportunity to um, attend some summer workshop sessions. Um, appreciate the opportunity to go along with um, Dr. Croto and Dr. Asai. Um, I would agree with what Ms. Schaffin said. Every um, room that we went in, everyone was just completely engaged, and it was just great to see a lot of good things um, happening over the summer, and it was um, heartwarming just to see how many people were interested in spending their summer just learning more and of what they can do to help our students succeed in the upcoming year, so that was great. Um, also, last week, I had the opportunity to attend the PLC conference put on by Solution Tree. The content was great, and I think our district team of administrators came back with some great strategies. Um, that they can share with their school site teams. I'd also like to specifically thank Dr. Croto for his vision as it pertains to the why behind the multifaceted benefits in attending this conference. While the topics presented provided valuable information our district teams can use on their campuses, the team building that took place was also a specific goal held by Dr. Croto. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to attend due to my work schedule, but it was very clear that having board members attend and be a part of the collaborative process was very important to him. And having attended, I can see that he was 100% right. Not only was it valuable for me to learn about how PLCs would be implemented in our district, but it was also refreshing to spend a couple days getting to know our administrators, share in the debriefing that occurred between and after sessions, and learn a little more about each other. So thank you again, Dr. Croto, for arranging this opportunity and seeing the value and positive relationships between the board and administration. I sincerely appreciate it. So, yeah. Um, I also attended a few of the summer workshops, and it was just really nice to hear from many of our educators um, existing and brand new to the district, how much they were gaining from the experience. Um, I would also like to especially thank Dr. Croto for presenting the workshop concept to our district. And I really do think that it's innovation like this that will truly make our students successful. Um, I also attended the PLC conference with our district and site leaders. 
this was an incredible experience for me to be able to connect and collaborate with our principals. I believe that collectively we gain different strategies in building a really dynamic and exciting culture and have, renew have a renewed sense of purpose in student success. Um, I would also just like to thank Dr. Dean for the last little over a year and, 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 and beyond because you have been, even not in the superintendent role, you have been a great support to me as a board member and you will be dearly missed. That's it. I also attended the PLC conference in Vegas. Um, as a new board member, I learned a lot. It was a great experience. I was extremely excited to be there. Um, I met a lot of great um, principals, uh, staff, administration. Um, going to the breakout sessions, I learned a lot. Um, took a lot of notes, still going through all my notes. <laughs> I still have my little green book. Um, a, lot of, a lot of things that they went over um, stuck out to me, especially about they were very focused on student success, um, academic achievement, and I could tell just by coming back in the conference room at the end of the day and collaborating um, at, our, at our tables listening to everybody discuss what they what they listened to and what they learned the enthusiasm in their voice you can hear the dedication on how they want to come back to the district and um, implement what they learned so it was very very exciting to hear i was i was very impressed um, so i just want to say thank you dr croto for allowing me to go um, unfortunately, I didn't get to go to any of the workshops, but I did take the week off to go to the PLC, and it was very worth it. So I just want to thank you um, for allowing me to be there. Um, and that opportunity, and Dr. Dean, you are going to be missed. I'm going to miss your, your one to two minute videos. <laughs> so, but thank you for everything that you've done. You know, I only got to work with you a little, a little bit, but in that little bit, I've learned a lot. So thank you, and thank you for your support. Yeah. Um, I also attended uh, the um, summer workshop, and uh, it was really interesting. So thank you so much for putting it together. I think it's a great idea, especially for the new teachers in the district. And I just want to say thank you to all the leaders and the teachers who participated in these workshops. I know it's summer, and that was very encouraging to see, but thank you for your service. And Dr. Dean, thank you for your service to, to Dysart, and AIA is really lucky to have you. All right, thank you. With that, we will move on to item D1. I will entertain a motion. I'd like to um, move to approve the consent agenda items as presented, with exception of item E1, moving that to action discussion. Could we also move 16 also, E16? So motion to approve consent agenda items as presented, with exception of E1 and E16. 16. E16, 16, moving both items to action discussion. I will second. Motion carries. Oh, sorry. Motion carries now. <laughs> I thought I saw it up there. Okay. So we will move on to item F1, Dr. Dean. Thank you, Madam President, <coughs> members of the governing board, cabinet, and our community this evening. Dr. Croto and Dr. Asai will uh, introduce these items. I would note to the board that 
Due to an unexpected issue today, uh, West Point Elementary School will, or I'm sorry, Kingswood Elementary School will not be presenting this evening. Um, they will present at a later time. So with that, Dr. Croto. Thank you, Dr. Dean. Madam President, members of the board, uh, we will begin our CIP presentations tonight with uh, Cimarron Springs and the principal, uh, Ms. Ginger Richards. Ginger, it's all yours. Good evening, Madam President, Governing Board, Dr. Dean and Cabinet. My name is Ginger Richards, and I am the very proud principal of Cimarron Springs Middle School. I would like to share with you the latest news coming out of Cimarron Springs. This year, we celebrate our initial results from AASA with increases in ELA for grades 6 and 8 and in math for grades 7 and 8. This shows that the work we've been putting into increasing student proficiency is working. In addition to traditional academics, we are also celebrating CTE in Spanish. In CTE, our students enjoyed guest speakers, field trips to West Mech, and to all the Dysart high schools to visit their CTE programs. We are creating a larger room so they have room to grow. We are adding different modules that better align with the high schools and support more interest from middle school students. In Spanish, the Spanish two students went on a real life experience field trip to Rio Mirage where the students were only permitted to speak Spanish once entering the building. Everyone had a great time, they had great food, and the staff at Rio Mirage were truly impressed on how well our Spanish two uh, students spoke. In addition to academic celebrations, we have to acknowledge athletics and arts. In athletics, our girls basketball went 11 and one and were number one seed going into the playoffs. Our cheer squad received the trophy for being number one in overall in the district. Boys basketball received the trophy for being number one in the North Valley Athletic Conference, which is a makeup of three districts. Also, we had our very first boys volleyball team thanks to our partnership with Willow Canyon. And I see you're wearing their shirt this evening, Dr. Dean. Their boys volleyball team came over during our lunch and hosted an exhibition game in clinic to get our boys hyped up for this new sport. Our band went to the Aboda Regional and State Competition. At Regional, they received a rating of Superior with Distinction, which is the highest score a school band can receive, and at State Competition, they received a Superior ranking. But like all schools, we have challenges. Student attendance is one big challenge. We can't teach students who aren't there. Another challenge was our teachers doing coverage for classes that did not have substitutes. This causes them to miss out on common prep, weekly prep connects, and they miss out on having time for data analysis with their teams. In addition, Having teachers out in general hurts students, and this year we did have an unfilled position and positions where the teacher resigned or went out on leave. I would like to highlight some academic successes, though. We celebrate our ESS Read 180 Lexile scores with an overall increase of 35%. We are number one in the district for this. Eighth grade academics. We are specifically noting eighth grade as they are the only grade that went up in all subject areas. We believe this is because we had a full staff that collaborated well and took ownership of each student and their individual needs to grow in their learning. As for academic challenges, we need to strengthen our effective intervention time and we need to take a good look and action with our fifth grade academics. After speaking with our fifth grade teachers, we believe that departmentalizing the fifth grade and having them change classrooms after every class was just too much for our younger students. So how are we working on these challenges? We are, imp we are um, implementing the PLC structures and collaboration. Actually, we're strengthening those because we have been doing it. We know that when teams plan based around the four questions that lessons are more targeted 
and formative assessments are more frequent. We noted a lack of formative assessments this year in grades that lost ground and think that PLCs focusing on the correct level of standard, assessing this daily, and monitoring and adjusting in real time will get the grade levels that lost ground back on track. The next thing we will do is I, that we are doing is identifying students for math and ELA labs based on the 22-23 benchmark and AASA data. There is a need to create guaranteed and viable curriculum, and while we can't guarantee that students have mastered every single standard, we can focus on getting all to proficiency in the bulkier ones. As such, we will identify these in tandem with the district, share them with students and parents, and have students track their proficiency to mastery. We will then zone in on these power standards for our interventions to strengthen our intervention tier two. The next thing that we have done is that we have a new schedule for fifth grade. Instead of having them rotate every single class, we are changing our fifth grade into two pods, four teachers to each. Blocking classes together like science and math and ELA and social studies. This lessens the movement of students and gives the teachers more opportunities to know and work with individual students based on their needs. And now I will end like I do always at Cimarron Springs after announcements. That's the news and go Stallions. Do you have any questions? I do. Um, when you said hold on, let me find it. that your reading went up 35%, that is wonderful. The Lexile scores for Read 180, yes. So can you give us an insight on what you did? <laughs> well, um, one of the first things that we did was hire a very experienced resource teacher for our special education students. She came late in the year, uh -huh. um, and she we had a contract teacher before that. Um, she took the bull by the horns and just really dug into the Read 180 program and completely did it with complete fidelity and made sure that the students were tracking and monitoring and celebrating all of the small growth areas. That is wonderful. Thank you. I just want to congratulate you. Um, I didn't realize that you were the only school that had eighth grade um, go up in all subject areas. That's amazing. Thank and you. I'm sure that your feeder high school is thankful because I know that's a that's a concern. That basically, what what who the um, high schools inherit, you know, basically that determines how much work they have to do. So I'm sure they very much appreciate, as do the students and families. Yeah that um, you're presenting students that are where they need to be and ready to learn ninth grade. So good for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I hope Adam Schwartz appreciates that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you. Madam President, members of the board, our next presenter is Amy Mykos from West Point. Good evening, Madam President, members of the board, Dr. Dean, and members of cabinet. My name is Amy Mykos, and I am the proud principal of West Point Elementary School. And it is my pleasure to be here tonight to share with you the progress that we are making towards our continuous improvement plan. So as we talk about celebrations, one of those is our K-3 reading curriculum rollout. We have received positive feedback from teachers um, on the professional development that was provided and specifically, teachers felt supported when they came back to campus. Um, our TLS worked very hard with those teachers to understand how to connect the curriculum with the standards. We are proud of the progress that we made on strengthening EL instructional practices for our English learners. This included training on EL standards, supporting teachers with integrated and targeted instructional practices, providing walkthroughs with feedback to teachers, and providing before school tutoring that targeted language acquisition. Campus improvement projects and beautification of our campus had a, um, or is another celebration as it impacts our climate and culture. As you know, we had a long um, construction process with our new driveway 
We have a fresh coat of paint, a new roof, and classroom window wraps were installed the last week of school. And I do want to sneak in one more celebration that's with our arts and um, athletics. Our campus had Willy Wonka uh, performance at the end of the year, and we're working to strengthen our dance band and orchestra programs. Our flag football team were champions of the region. Our baseball team was a runner-up. And our cheer team had first place trophies for small group and two third place trophies as well. Like all campuses, we have challenges. Our first is staffing. Um, we know that our most important resource is our teachers and our staff. Some of our challenges this year with staffing were that we had five teachers resign in the fall after the start of the year. One of our first grade sections was unfilled all year leaving a class size of 32 first graders, if you can even imagine. Two uh, math interventionists and a social worker also remained unfilled, and we are currently still working to fill for this coming year. Absenteeism was a struggle, just like you heard um, with Ms. Richards. We had 195 staff absences that did not have sub coverages. So when I calculated how many prep coverages that is, it's 1,755 missed preps. That's a lot. Um, student absenteeism is another struggle at West Point. It's consistent um, across the country. We had 200 students with 18 or more absences, and that's just a lot of learning loss. We do have some successes to celebrate. Um, the initial third grade AASA data indicated that we have double digit growth in both in third grade for reading and for math. And our third graders also had higher than expected Acadians growth. And um, we also anticipate that we have nearly all of our grades showing growth in proficiency on AASA. So with successes, they also can relate to our challenges. So while we did show growth, we continue to have challenges of large numbers of students who are minimally or partially proficient in both reading and math. And two of our grade levels had lower than expected growth on their Dibbles mark marks. So what are we doing? The plan that we have in place to address our school challenges is through professional development. We will have three focuses, refinement of our PLC process, school-wide behavior management support, and instructional best practices. So to refine our PLC practice, we really wanna put a focus on learning, collaboration, and results. Our theme for next year is moving learning forward. And as we believe that there will be a shift from teaching to learning that we will see um, our proficiency levels and scores rise. Our IAP staff survey indicated that we can continue to improve by holding students to high expectations for behavior and academics. One innovative program that we are starting to address this is called ZAP, Zeros Aren't Permitted, which will be run by our newly acquired um, academic interventionist. The ZAP program will start in fifth through eighth grade, and it will provide students who have a zero on any assignment time during their lunch, before or after school, to make sure they're getting support to finish those assignments and complete their work. We found that missing assignments were a consistent struggle with our fifth through eighth grade students, and um, resulting in lower than expected number of students earning honor roll or principal's list. So the ZAP program is one way that we will work to increase the number of students who earn these honor recognitions and create a culture of learning. And with that, do you have any questions? Thank you very much. Um, just quick question about the ZAP program. How are you staffing your before and after school availability? So our academic interventionist, which is our newly acquired position, will be in charge of that. And so it won't be every day. We'll have strategic days that students will be available to come either before or after school. We have also set aside budget money where teachers can get paid to do that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Next we will move on to F2, Dr. Dean. Thank you, Madam President, members of the Governing Board, the Cabinet and our community. I'll turn this item over to Dr. Croto for presentation. Thank you, Dr. Dean, Madam President, members of the Board, Cabinet and guests. Uh, by request of the Governing, uh, governing Board member, uh, we have a quick presentation on our provisions of water as related to our, our student activities um, that are starting in the heat of the summer. So who supplies our water? Uh, in, a, in a nutshell, our athletic trainers 
uh, on our high school campuses. They provide water jugs for all our sports, uh, including band, if requested. Um, and with that, the, the athletic trainers have sports medicine students who intern with them, and they are often uh, the ones who assist on this task. So when the athletic trainers are off campus, obviously the head coach is going to be responsible for preparing water jugs and making sure that um, our students have plenty of water uh, while the activities are taking place. So it's very important that uh, the head coaches are in constant contact with the athletic trainers or the athletic directors uh, to figure out who's going to be there, when they're going to be there, just to have that communication um, so they know that the students have water. Um, also, uh, as a note on this presentation, is the athletic trainers are constantly, they have, um, they have weather bulbs and they're constantly uh, determining the weather conditions on our field. So when it's time for increased water breaks, uh, how much amount of activity are outdoors, uh, those are called wet bulbs that they monitor. Uh, that comes across their phones. We just got brand new ones for them. Uh, so they check the humidity levels and with that there's heat guidelines uh, that you can see listed there as far as um, when our students should participate and it's relative to the humidity and the temperature outside. So we have a constant, um, a constant watch on that, especially as it's starting to get hot now um, and, and this week and next week. And we definitely have a plan on who is supplying water and, and how students get water. So with that, I will uh, stop for any questions. Thank you for putting this presentation together. Um, since this was my item, I just I just have a couple questions. When it I, you mentioned band in here, and I, I really appreciate that because that's where my brain automatically goes, just being a band mom. But obviously, we have the concern with sports. But with band, it's it is this stating that athletic trainers are going to provide water for marching band? Athletic trainers will provide water um, if requested for the band. So they again, they have to be in communication. Mm -hmm. um, and they're, as long as they're on campus, it's sometimes they're not on campus, so they're not available, but um, they will do it. We've been in touch with all the athletic trainers and talked to the athletic trainers, so they will be able to do that if requested and that they're there at the same time. Okay, so obviously this is not just for um, an active game, uh, district-sponsored game, but this would be for practice That is as correct. Well. And, and summer camps. Correct. Okay, so um, I just wanted some clarity. At no time, while we might accept the offer, obviously, at no time would a parent organization be responsible for providing water for students. Uh, Madam, Madam President, Member Densmore, um, they, they can. I guess, I guess that they can. Right. We don't require them to do that. That is obviously the school's responsibility and the head coach or the sponsor right. of the band right. um, to fulfill that. So they can do it. We don't tell them they can't, but it is not required of a parents club to do that. That is a school responsibility okay. and obviously the coach or, or the sponsor's responsibility. Right. Um, I think with most of our, our sports and, and outdoor activities, especially over the summer, just in, in the warmer months, uh, I know that it's, it's common for a coach or a teacher or sponsor for whatever, you know, however you want to phrase that, to request that the students bring their own water to the field. Mm -hmm. And that, that's practical and it makes sense. Correct. But in the event that a student forgets their water, at any time would we not allow a student to go and obtain water? Would we ever tell a student that they cannot leave the field to go get water? Absolutely not. Obviously, we, okay. we tell our coaches and, and our band teachers they are to build in breaks in their practice schedules. We have those meetings with them. Right. Uh, and more breaks needed as the temperature rises and it gets hotter, obviously, and it depends on what type of activity. Um, you know, if you're in, in a football practice, for instance, and you're covered with pads and a helmet, you need to pay attention to that because that's a hotter environment. Okay. Um, but at, if a student needs water, um, a student should be permitted to get water. Okay. Uh, if a student forgets water, um, there should be an avenue of which a student gets water. It's very dangerous in these hot temperatures um, to not have water and stay hydrated. So with that, I will add too, it's important for our coaches and our athletes to stress that hydration doesn't occur during practice. It is an all-day thing. 
you can't catch up in a two-hour practice to be hydrated for stuff you have not been drinking all day after you drink soda all day and all the stuff where you didn't drink any liquids to think you're going to hydrate during the activity when you're using a lot of liquids. So it's important for our athletes and our band members that they're drinking water all day long uh, to keep that hydration up. It's very important, and we stress that. Perfect. Thank you so much. I had a quick question. I, looking at the heat guidelines, I remember many, many, many years ago, and I think Dr. Dean, you were probably put in charge of this um, project at the time. We didn't have, we, I was concerned about heat index and how it's much different than temperatures and how it pertains to students and being hydrated and things like that. Is that what this is? Do we still have that in place? Madam President, Member Pritchard, yes, you are correct. It was many years ago. Yes, you are correct. I was put in, par in charge of that project. And uh, the degrees that you have in front of you are heat index numbers. The wet bulb globe thermometers measure heat index. Um, so they take into account uh, both heat, humidity, um, and any wind factor as well um, when they measure that. And we, uh, to this day, send out um, heat alerts in the months of August and September and sometimes October. So everybody still follows those. You are correct. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. And I do have a question. Is it up to the individual sponsor or coach to determine what 25% work and 75% rest looks like? Yes, in a way, um, okay. because they're in charge of building their practice schedule. So they know um, exactly what they're doing when, when they're doing that. So yes, we put the coaches in charge of that because they're in charge of their practices. So yes. And this information is given to coaches and sponsors? Okay. There's a preseason meeting with every single sport in our district, so elementary-wise as well as high school-wise. Madam President, I, I, I may add as well that there are times often, or there are many times, where especially um, football coaches will push the start of, of practice back in terms of time. Cross-country coaches will practice early in the morning um, or late at night. Um, to make sure that our students are uh, in the best environment possible. The AIA, ironically, um, to m reference them in my last meeting, um, the AIA also has heat acclimatization um, requirements that students uh, or student athletes must participate in in order to uh, be active in each season. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Next, we will move on to item G1, Dr. Dean. Thank you, Madam President, members of the Governing Board, Cabinet, and our community. This evening, we bring uh, to the Board a recommendation to reclassify uh, the uh, Superintendent uh, Executive Assistant from Grade D to Grade E. The Board has received information via email on this item previously. Do we have any questions? Okay. Then I will move to approve the job reclassification for the superintendent's office as presented. Second. Motion made by Crystal Chapman, seconded by Don Densmore. Motion carries. We will move on to G2, Dr. Dean. Thank you, Madam President, members of the Governing Board, Cabinet, and our community. This item is a yearly item that's brought to the board that names those in the district who are able to enter into uh, written agreements, contract purchase orders, and property control. It consists of Cabinet, uh, our, our Purchasing Administrator, and uh, our Director of Finance. Thank you. Do we have any questions? Let me just clarify that for just a, mo a moment. They're the ones who are able to sign the agreements. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, I will move to adopt the resolution naming authorized signers for written agreements, contracts, purchase orders, and property control for the 2023-2024 fiscal year. Motion made by Crystal Chaffin, seconded by Joe Grant. Motion carries. We will move on to G3. 
Thank you, Dr. Madam D. President, members of the Governing Board Cabinet, and our community this evening. I will turn this item over to Dr. Poling. Good evening, Madam President, members of the Board, Cabinet, and community. Administration is proud to recommend Nestor Felix for the position of Assistant Principal at Valley Vista High School for the 23-24 school year. Mr. Felix received a master's degree in educational leadership from Capella University. He has extensive educational experience as well as five years administrative experience with Glendale Union High School District. He will receive salary and benefits commensurate with the position, his education and experience. His resume is attached for board review. A comprehensive selection process was used to identify Mr. Felix for this position. And with that, Mr. Felix is with us this evening and with that I'll stand for any questions. Thank you, do we have any questions? Okay, I will move to approve the appointment of Nestor Felix as high school assistant principal. Second. Motion made by Crystal Chaffin, seconded by Christine Pritchard. Motion carries, congratulations. Thank you, we will move on to item G4, Dr. Dean. Thank you, Madam President, members of the governing board, cabinet in our community, back to Dr. Croto. You mean polling? I'm Dr. sorry, Dr. Polling. Dr. polling. Thank you. <laughs> it's one of the doctors and it's not me. <laughs> Thank you, Madam President, members of the board, cabinet community. We are proud to recommend Angela Bonds for the position of assistant principal at Sunset Hills Elementary School for the 23-24 school year. Ms. Bonds received a master's degree in educational administration from Grand Canyon University Thank you. She has extensive educational experience and is currently the school data improvement specialist for DiceArt. She'll receive salary and benefits commensurate with the position, her education and experience. Her resume is attached for review and a comprehensive selection process was used to identify Ms. Bonds for this position. And Ms. Bonds is also in attendance tonight. And with that, I'll stand for any questions. Thank you, do we have any questions? All right, I will move to approve the appointment of Angela Bonds as elementary school assistant principal. Motion made by Crystal Chaffin, seconded by Don Densmore. Mm. Motion carries, congratulations. Next, we will move on to G5, Dr. Dean. Thank you, Madam President, members of the Governing Board, Cabinet, and our community, because you've heard from all members of the Cabinet this evening, except one. We felt it was important to give the other one an opportunity to speak as well. <laughs> and so, Mr. Hicks will be providing information on the 23-24 proposed budget. Thank you very much. <laughs> Good evening, Madam President, members of the Board, Superintendent Dr. Dean, Uh, thank you very much for the Mr. Hicks, I don't think your microphone's on. It is on. <laughs> Sorry, wow. my apologies. <clears throat> um, I guess uh, I'll, I'll be missing this banter. <laughs> Mr. Hicks, I think your microphone is off again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know we've talked a lot about the budget in the last few months, um, uh, and and. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Renee, can you check the light first? <coughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <clears throat> Mr. Hicks, is your office locked? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> never shared that story. <clears throat> um, so, have we been talking about a lot of the um, factors going into our budget for next? Oh my God. Is this for real going on right now? I'm sorry, we appear to be having some technical issues. I think that we're probably good. Do we have any more confetti cannons? I uh, know, I think we're good though. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you very much. <coughs> hey, they did it to me too, so we're good. <laughs> 
guess I didn't think of it as abuse until you get it done to yourself. <laughs> I guess, sorry, I apologize for not. Okay, Mr. Thanks Hicks, we are now ready for your <coughs> proposed budget. All right, thank you very much. So, as we have worked through the budget stuff the last three months a lot, um, we actually started back in October, November working on student projections. Um, we worked on our student benefit package, our records retention stipend in January, the benefits in February, um, the IBA recommendations from last month, our legislative budget process, uh, our legislative budget from last month, um, the projected increases, uh, utility rates, our inflation impact, our minimum wage. <coughs> the, with all of that, the marvelous Miss Mary Dell Spidell and her amazing team take all of those different inputs and they um, take the state budget forms and they put it all together and so we now have our, state, our actual proposed budget that we are asking for approval. <coughs> the approval of this budget, um, it will allow us to post it. It is a two-step process, which is a very good thing uh, because what we want to do is be able to post that this is our approved proposed budget that will be considered on J July 13th so that our community has a chance to look at it. So once uh, tonight's done, we will post it um, on our website. We'll get it done, post it on ADE's website, all the appropriate postings so that our community can take a look at it. I know that I stated uh, during our IBA recommendations that um, our Arizona le legislature did an amazing job for school districts. This is the second year in a row that they've gone above and beyond with funding, um, beyond what my projections were and where I was hearing we were going. So we are very appreciative of that and we're very appreciative of the support of our community that provides to our budget as well. So we're very thankful. Um, the additional funds, there were additional funds that came out of it out of the budget process uh, with the legislature. As uh, discussed during our IBA recommendations, our IBA uh, process was to not commit those funds and just to hold them for uh, the future for next year's budget. And so this has all those um, additional revenue, but uh, we really just put it into our reserves and not committing it to future expenses. So um, with that, um, I will wrap up the proposed budget and stand for any questions. Thank you, Mr. Hicks. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions? Dr. Dean, do you have any questions? <laughs> I do not have any questions <laughs> at this time. Okay, with that, I will move to approve the 2023-2024 proposed budget. Second. Motion made by Crystal Chapman, seconded by Joe Grant. Oh, Jeff Jenny Drake. Drake. Motion carries, thank you. Next, we will move on to G6, Dr. Dean. Uh, Madam President, members of the Governing Board, Cabinet, and our community, this item was pulled from consent for discussion, and I will turn it over to the board. Thank you very much. Hold on just a second, we're not sure. This is actually is a real technology glitch. <laughs> okay. Um, and then the bottom. Can, can you, um, you share where in the budget the funding for this comes from? Madam President, I'll Madam turn this to Mr. President, Hicks. Um, are you asking exactly what page? It's on page one of eight in line, sorry, <laughs> um, line four under purchase service. This is for the Greater Phoenix Management Council. Is that what we're talking about? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm sorry, which bucket? Uh, page one of eight on the budget. 
You said where in the budget does it come out? I believe the, the question fund? is the code. What fund? The budget right yeah. now, uh, fund M and O. Sorry, M and O fund. Thank Sorry. You. You're welcome. Didn't need the page number, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> when you said where in the budget, and I got the whole budget here. <laughs> Perhaps we could go over the revised budget or the proposed budget again <laughs> and go start over from every the page if we'd like to go through page by <coughs> page. He got all excited I asked a budget question. <laughs> <laughs> what was what was the answer to that question? Um, M&O. M and O. M and O. Dr. Dean, since you have had have attended these events, can you speak to the benefit of this? Uh, Madam President, Member Densmore, I, I can speak to the advantages that we've had in being part of Guppy Mech. So uh, the Dysart School District has been part of Guppy Mech for as long as I've been at the district office, which has been 15 years, perhaps earlier than that. Um, we are one of the larger districts in Guppy Mech. As a matter of fact, I believe the largest districts uh, consists of us Scottsdale, Chandler, and I believe Deer Valley are the largest um, school districts that are involved um, in Guppy Mech. The benefits come from a, a couple of areas. Uh, Guppy Mech provides workshops throughout the course of the school year that are attended by our educational services staff. Uh, so our director of um, curriculum instruction and assessment, our curriculum specialists attend these meetings, and there are opportunities uh, to engage um, in collaborative work with school districts across the county um, to work to really uh, share stories of successes, look for instructional strategies that are being beneficial in um, various school populations, um, and to uh, to refine uh, our instructional approaches as it come as it relates to. Um, what we bring back and, and discuss and share with our staff. Additionally, uh, Guppy Mech holds workshops for superintendents, uh, and um, those workshops consist of um, some similar opportunities, uh, conversations related to state board, uh, the State Board of Education. Guppy Mech serves as a, uh, as a liaison um, between school districts and the State Board of Education, um, as well as opportunities for um, legislative uh, pieces as well. Uh, Guppy Mech was one of the groups that was instrumental in um, working with the legislature both last year and this year. Um, one of many groups uh, that worked with the legislature uh, increasing funding to education. From a purely personal um, perspective, uh, Guppy Mech was an opportunity this year for me as a new superintendent uh, to collaborate with 59 other superintendents um, and, uh, and really focus conversation on what was best for students, not only in our district, but for the Valley as well. And while there are at times differing views um, in terms of what that is, um, it, it's great conversation that leads to opportunities to bring back um, to, uh, to our piece. It's a great, uh, for a new superintendent, it's a great opportunity um, for collaboration with a large number of other superintendents that you would not typically have, um, as well as the education services benefits. Those are the pieces that I would say that we benefit from. Thank you. And I know that you mentioned um, some other staff attending these meetings, but this specific item for this specific IGA, is that just for the superintendent attendance? Um, Madam President, Member Densmore, this specific item is for the entire Guppy Mech package. So Thanks. our, yes, our, I believe it's a three-year agreement that we enter into with Guppy Mech. Um, is, it, is it five? I'm sorry. Five. Yeah. Um, a five-year agreement. And um, I believe, unless I misread and someone can clarify for me that this is an agreement um, that is for the whole package. Um, the amount that we pay as a district is, or that all districts pay, is based upon your student enrollment. Um, and we are, as we are one of the larger districts in Guppy Mech, we are in the, the highest tier. And I believe the amount for the district per year is $10,049 or 94. I may have had a little bit of a dyslexic moment there. I have a couple of things to clarify. I was listening to you speak about it. Um, would you say, as far as like what, as far as new superintendent goes, ASA? Do they provide a lot of that um, guidance and mentoring and education? Uh, Madam President, uh, Member Pritchard, I think the answer to your question are these are two different um, two different organizations. Uh, the 
the biggest piece from a mentoring perspective um, that's provided to superintendents in the state now is through Grand Canyon University and their superintendent collaborative network. Um, I was part of that. Dr. Croto has signed up to be part of that as well. And that is free of charge to, uh, to school districts. You're provided a mentor. Um, Grand Canyon University works with, uh, you work not only with your mentor, but with Grand Canyon University four times during the course of the year. That's great mentorship. Uh, ASA and Guppy Mech have different uh, different missions and different approaches in terms of what they're doing. Um, Guppy Mech is, is sub focused substantially more on uh, the educational end of, of schools. ASA is focused more on um, the school administration end um, and uh, administrative types tax tasks. And am I reading this correctly just in looking at their budget? Am I reading it correctly where it looks <coughs> like the majority of that of their revenue goes toward the salary of the executive director and the advocacy coordinator salary of like two hundred sixty thousand dollars of the four hundred five thousand. Uh, Madam President, Member Pritchard, uh, according to this document, that would be correct. I would note that in just looking at this uh, quickly, that um, it states that that is salary and benefits um, for both of those pieces. Um, so that would be a total package for the two staff that are listed there with Guppy Mech. Mm -hmm. But still, the majority of their revenue that the, goes to that. It would appear to be uh, more than 50%. Yeah. And um, I just noticing Peoria, which is one of our neighboring districts, I don't see them on the list as being members. We probably don't have any information as to why. Madam President Mer Pritchard, I've never worked in the Peoria School District. curious if you knew why they weren't on here. I do have a question. So when you have these professional developments, who designs the workshops and the programs? How, how is that decided what is going to be presented to the superintendents and the people attending these sessions? Madam President, the answer is uh, to that question is that uh, Guppy Mech also holds uh, boards for each area. Uh, so there is a working uh, board for uh, the education end, there is a working board for the superintendent end as well. Uh, we, have had, uh, we have had our staff um, serve as presidents of those boards um, in the educational services end uh, or, uh, or working uh, components in that board as they work to design that. So we've had a really big hand in that in the past in terms of that piece. Um, as a new superintendent, um, I felt it wasn't appropriate for me to uh, be part of that board even though I've been parts of other boards before. And then how closely does the Guppy Mech, um, how closely do they work with the ADE? Uh, Madam President, I'm not certain how closely they work with ADE. Um, I do know that, um, that they, as well as ASA, ASBO, um, other alphabet organizations, um, you know, seek out opportunities to work with both the legislature, the State Board of Education, and ADE as well. In terms of their frequency, I don't know the answer to that question. And then, do you know, having attended some of these, what types of subjects, what types of uh, professional developments, what are some session topics that are presented to a superintendent or anybody else? Madam President, so some of the items that they discuss are um, ways to work successfully with the State Board of, of uh, Education, um, uh, legislative um, connections in how to work with your local legislators, which is a very important thing to do to communicate with um, our local legislators. I know Mr. Hicks um, wears out his computer um, every year in, in you know, emailing information and providing that. And, and it's important that our legislators hear from education leaders in their communities so that they understand the issues that are faced there. Those are a, a couple of the big uh, projects. Additionally, you've seen in many uh, CIP presentations uh, that absenteeism is a, an issue. It's an issue not only in the state, it's an issue in the country. So timely topics such as that w would be um, items that are discussed. Um, and you know, sharing of ideas of, of how people are being successful um, or seeking out ways not. Those are just some small examples of of things that happen at Guppy Mech. Thank you. Sure. I have a question. Um, when you talked about the legislative part, if if we weren't if 
the district wasn't part of this, could you still contact the legislators and discuss? Madam President, Member Drake, anyone can contact a legislator at any time. Um, you know, this yes. Like, yes. Okay. And then since we've, a, we've attended over the years and obviously we've benefited from it, um, what have we brought back to Dysart that's been a positive influence from this from participating in this for so many years? Yeah. What have we benefited from it? Madam President, Member Drake, I will tell you that up until this year of the last 15, I have not been involved in the education side of the district office. Uh, my piece has been uh, more related to support services, um, athletics overseeing high school components that weren't education based. Uh, and so from the last several years, I can't um, answer that question. I will tell you that as a new superintendent, I found it to be incredibly valued, valuable. Um, and I would state that it would be the same for Dr. Croto. Um, the value that he would receive um, in, in going into this agreement um, would be, uh, it would be very beneficial as a brand new superintendent. And I believe that there's an out clause um, in the Guppy Mech agreement with a 90 day notice. I believe there's an out clause as well. I did notice the out clause. Um, So with that said, we would have to do this uh, if we were to approve tonight. And if we found that it was not being beneficial, um, we would need to cancel 90 days prior to the next renewal. Is that, am I understanding that correctly? Uh, Madam President, Member Densmore, the out clause um, asks that, uh, or requires that, um, that the cancellation be 90 days prior to the end of a fiscal year. Okay. So it could be um, as early, I would say February probably is your safest bet. Uh, March, it's probably the March timeline is, is what you would be looking at if you were to enter in and then consider um, terminating the agreement. April, May, June, Fe March would be the time that you would, that conversation would, would need to happen. My math was a little off there with February. And do you have any insight? What kinds of things does this coordinator do? The the coordinator that they pay in the guppy mech? Uh, Madam President, the, um, from my understanding, um, the coordinator not only uh, works with the various boards. Sorry, executive director. I'm sorry, is that what it my, is? I'm sorry, yes, thank you. that's the correct, um, my the, bad. Yeah, the, my understanding, the executive director uh, works f with the various boards in leading the, the board for education services and the board for the superintendent uh, planning workshops, um, works with them to plan those pieces. Um, he facilitates all of the Guppy Mech meetings throughout the course of the year. Uh, he is he is the liaison uh, between the State Board of Education and the 60 school districts. Um, he's the one who would seek out opportunities to meet with uh, the governor's education staff, ADE, uh, uh, as well as um, the State Board of Education, and then would also facilitate conversations as it relates to Guppy Mech's um, concerns and or um, support interest to uh, the legislature as well. So if I'm looking, thank you so much. Thank you for that. Thank you. If I'm looking at the budget, the executive director salary full time is 160 grand, 930 for the whole package. And then is, is this how it's broken down? The contract, it looks like it's got 160,000 nine hundred and thirty dollars for salary and benefits and then it's got consultants another eight thousand um, then we're paying indirect costs and dues and fees i'm not quite sure do we know what the dues and fees are or is this are these memberships for the executive directory and the and the advocacy coordinator or are these memberships for our superintendents and staff who are part of this uh, madam president uh, i'm going to assume um, that it's the first part of, of what you discussed. It is okay. not related to benefits for um, our staff. Um, however, one piece I might add is that um, there's nothing timely to tonight's agenda with this, and we could actually seek out additional information from Guppy Mech um, and or have their executive director come to the next meeting in July um, and answer questions directly to the board or provide information directly to the board as it relates specifically to their budget. I'm, I'm not involved in their budget enough to answer those questions. Okay, because it looks, it looks like he's getting a base salary, but then they're getting all this other money. I, I don't know if it looks like, does it look like this is stuff we're paying or? 
Yeah, understand. Okay. I, you know, I, I, their their membership or their their budget is based upon membership dues. Um, I believe that they are. Again, I'm going off my own understanding and not knowing their budget, but I believe that the, I know that the vast majority of their budget comes from membership dues. Uh, in terms of exactly what that breakdown is and where it goes, I don't know the answer to that question. But we can get that for you. Thank you. And I'm just curious because there's a lot of mention about another school district um, in the IGA document. Mm -hmm. Are the meetings located at that school district? Madam President, Member Densmore, you're, I believe you're referring to the Albuquerque School District. So um, the the handling of the budget for Guppy Met goes through the Albuquerque School District. However, um, the meetings are held throughout the county. Uh, and the uh, they could be anywhere from. Uh, there was one held in the Southwest Valley recently. Uh, earlier in the year, there was one held in J.O. Combs um, School District, which is a really long way away from here, right? Um, they're held in the North Valley. Um, they're held all over the place. They rotate. Yes, they, thank you. They rotate. Okay. I'm feeling like we probably have overwhelmed you with a lot of questions about this. Uh, and, and I'm sorry. I just don't it's know okay. the answers to some of them. I'm, no, no, no. That's okay. Yeah. But I... I um, I like the idea of maybe tabling this until the July meeting. Um, have everyone else feel and, and we can certainly reach out to um, to Mr. Carlson, their executive director, uh, and and gather more information and um, make sure that Dr. Croto has that for you for the next meeting. Okay. Uh, does anybody else have thoughts? I'm fine with tabling it. Um, I move to table the uh, IGA with Guppy Mac, um, bringing that back until um, in the July meeting. Second. Motion made by Don Densmore, seconded by Christine Pritchard. I believe it's July 13th. Seconded by Christine. Christine. Motion carries. Next, we will move on to G7, Dr. Dean. Thank you, Madam President, members of the Governing Board, Cabinet, and our community. Um, this item was uh, requested to, to move from consent to action discussion. I'll turn it back to the board. Thank you. Did you do it again? Did we do it again? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, my mic's going. Yes. I do have a question on this. Um, is there a way that I could get what the process for this is? The correct process? Um, Madam President, we, uh, members of the board, we advertised, uh, pushed it out on Facebook. We had a Google form that they submitted a letter of interest. Um, we collected all the names, some of them sent in resumes, um, took all the eligible candidates that met the criteria, could not be an employee to you know, live within our district. Uh, took it to cabinet, discussed everybody, and brought those three recommend the ones an incumbent, but um, talked about the names for recommendation. Because I know that one of them currently served as a chairperson, so they didn't have to reapply. They didn't have to submit anything. They were just just they reappointed. Nope, no, they submitted a letter of interest, oh. and so they did send us an email saying yes, they're willing to continue oh, to serve. Okay. Okay. So there wasn't an interview process. It was just basically subjective discussion in cabinet. Yep. Is that unusual <coughs> with that interview process? Um, Madam President, um, I don't. I think this started around 2009, 2010. So I wasn't here at the very beginning. The last six years, we've just had vacancies. When we promote, we don't get anybody. Sometimes we just take <laughs> whoever we can get. Um, 
And so really we're just looking for letter of interest. There's not a lot of qualifications. We're looking at an overview. Um, we're looking at making sure there's an oversight, reviewing recommendations, and making sure that we're looking out for the wellness and well-being of our employees through the benefits plan. So really there's only three criteria. There's no job description that you need to do any of that. You just have to be present and pay attention and give us your honest feedback. How many people did we have apply? We're trying to decipher the exact amount. Um, my assistant's out. Oh, that's it? Um, and yeah. so Madam President, Member Pritchard, uh, it, we believe we had 11 people that actually started the process to okay. show interest, of which six actually um, continued moving forward. We had a couple of employees who were interested. They are not eligible um, to be part of this board who provides recommendations back to our governing board. I just, when I said, is it typical, I was just thinking, like, throughout our district, we kind of pride ourselves on our rigorous interview process. Um, and if there, we were looking for two people and we had 11 and then down to six, I was just curious as to why we wouldn't have, give those people the opportunity to speak to their talent or experience rather than just having it be a subjective conversation. Madam President, Member Pritchard, um, the questions are valid. We are using a process that was developed in 2009 um, when we started the Employee um, Trust Board, and uh, we've just conti been continuing with that process. To the best of my knowledge. And can I ask, can you just kind of give us an overview? What exactly does the, the board of the trust, what exactly is their role? for our district. Can you just kind of clarify that for everybody? Um, Madam President, members of the board, because we have a self-insured trust, um, we're required to have a board and they're required to meet four times a year. That is the legal requirement. We have bylaws um, that I give a little bit more definition and really they just listen to presentations. They vote to support recommendations, but all the power uh, rests with our governing board. So they do not have authority to change our benefits plans or packages. Normally before, uh, not normally, every time before I've brought any benefit decision before the board, I make sure I run it by, by them first, just to make sure they're on board. Sometimes they'll frame just uh, inquiries and questions about how and what we're doing, and that will frame what and how we're doing and how we're presenting different benefit packages to the board. And then do you feel like um, the Benefits Trust the board has been successful and accomplished all of its goals in the past years? Um, Madam President, members of the board, the only legal requirement is they meet. So they, yes, they meet that requirement. So we are in compliance from that standpoint. Um, we have actually, there's a couple of our benefit wellness items that have come out of members on there. Really, it was through their own experience of their own employees said, hey, we do this, can we look at it? And, and then we looked at it and we have implemented it. Um, so there has been some successes, but the biggest thing we want is we don't operate in a vacuum. They represent our community and we want to know what we're doing and what we're providing and they just listen and give us their feedback. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And these, these meetings happen just once per quarter? Um, Madam President, members of the board, we do it a little bit more, but yes, a minimum once per quarter. Okay. They're in board docs, so you can go back and see. We post all of ours. We follow the open meeting law. We have mm -hmm. recognized if there's any guests there. I think there's been one in six years or two in six years, um, but we do the same thing, and we have follow all open meeting law. Who, who all is present normally outside of, like, the one-time visitor? But who, who's present? So it would be the, the Board of Trustees, yourself, and then who else? Um, Madam President, members of the board, I am a member, so I am on the board. For a member, okay. <coughs> um, and then we have my assistant who takes all the notes to make sure our meeting goes well. We have our benefits manager, Ms. Janice Peel, mm -hmm. and our director of finance, Mary Dell, will uh, um, be there. Sometimes we'll have our benefit consultants, and sometimes we'll bring in Blue Cross Blue Shield people or different benefit providers. Um, that may happen once, uh, probably once a year on those type of things. Okay. <coughs> Do we have any other questions? Okay, all right, with that I will move to appoint the trustees to the Employee Benefits Trust Board. 
motion made by Crystal Chapman, seconded by Joe. Joe Grant. Motion carries. Next, we will move on to H1, request for future agenda items. Madam President, I'm not sure if it's proper, but I have about a three-page list that I would like to encourage for future agenda items. Uh, timer? Where's the timer? <laughs> <laughs> Renee, how about them lights? <laughs> Do we have any requests? I, yeah, in lieu of the, the recent conversation, I would like to request a, an item to discuss the process to appoint future trustees for the Benefits Trust Board. Are we able to, are we able to include, like just in general, like all appointed boards, how the district does that, or do you just want specific to trust? That would be, okay. I like your idea. Thank you. All boards, committees, whatever we want to call that. Madam President, Member Densmore and Ms. Pritchard, you can ask for any agenda items you'd like after <laughs> July 1st. <laughs> but yes, um, the, the, all kidding aside, um, the Cabinet would be happy to provide that presentation. <coughs> Thank you. Do we have any others? All right. With that, that leaves us to I-1, another confetti cannon for Dr. Dean. Just kidding. Motion to adjourn the meeting. I move that we adjourn the meeting. Second. Motion made by Crystal Chaffin, seconded by Don no. or Joe? Jenny. Both of us, so whoever. <laughs> Pick one. I'll do it. Jennifer Drake. <laughs> it's hard to hear. Like, I hear I a know, voice down sorry. there. Sometimes. I guess I'll scream. I didn't. I did not vote no. <laughs> I didn't. Thought about it. I always think about it. <laughs> Motion carries. We are adjourned.